I want to share something with you today that I think you're going to find helpful. But first, I want to share a quote. And the quote says, fall in love with taking care of yourself. Fall in love with the path of deep healing. Fall in love with becoming the best version of yourself, but with patience, with compassion and respect to your own journey. I need you to think about that for a minute. Fall in love with yourself and fall in love with taking care of yourself. For I believe that that is what will help you to be able to let go of the thing that was no longer good for you. What is up, my dear friends? My name is Tyler Joe Stratton. I am the heartbreak coach as well as the best-selling author of the book, The Big Three, helping you build joyful and loving relationships with yourself, others, and God and everything in between after heartbreak, as well as the proud founder and owner of the Happy Heart Academy, where I teach you how to live more joyfully from your heart rather than your hurt so that you can create happiness after your heartbreak and in your life and relationships to come. Today, we're talking about how to let go of someone you love and finally be able to move forward. Um, and I think, like I said, the first thing that I really need you to begin to focus on in order to let go of someone is this idea that I, I need you to stop thinking about letting go. Letting go can be rather hard. I need, to, I need you to think about moving forward because moving forward puts you in some type of direction that I think that you will feel more committed um, and it would be a little bit easier. Letting go is, is so difficult. And discovering in today's podcast, we're going to be talking about how you can discover how to move on um, from the past and embrace a more happier future for yourself, you know, because I know that we've all had an ex that we can't seem to get out of our minds at one point or time, a harmful friendship we hold on to or that has completely exhausted us, right? And we somehow even after the exhaustion, after we know that they're no longer good for us, we somehow still can't learn how to let go of them, even when we know that they're not good for us. So how do you begin to let go of your ex? How do you begin to let go of toxic relationships all in general? That's what we're going to be talking about today. And as always, please give me grace as I share with you some notes that I wrote down. Sometimes I like to read from my notes. Sometimes I just like to kind of go on um, a little bit of a, a speaking spree, you can call it. But nonetheless, it's going to be good information to help you overcome your heart's hurt, live more from your heart, and be able to move on in a uh, hope-filled future and way. So why is letting go so challenging for so many? You know, holding on is a natural human instinct, and it is also a critical way that we stop ourselves from reaching happiness, because ultimately not knowing how to move on can harm us, and it probably is currently harming you, because it's preventing you from achieving your true potential, your true happiness, your true better self, or a better relationship, a healthier relationship with yourself and others, and ultimately God and everything in between. So why is it so challenging for us to be able to let go? You know, we, why do we have so much trouble learning how to let go of someone we love? Time and time again, I've, I've been asked, Tyler, how do I let go? How do I move on from someone I love? How do I let go of someone I love but don't want to let go of? You know, I think the first step uh, that really begins to take place is you won't be able to let go if you don't want to let go. I know that sounds like, well, duh, but for real, you won't be able to let go unless you are ready to let go. So you need to get to a place in which you can find yourself wanting to let go. And I'll give you a couple ways in which you can begin to let go. But first, I like to talk about um, how we like to hold on to things and situations, especially people, because it fulfills our need for certainty. So we genuinely like to hold on to things, because it fulfills our need for certainty, like holding on to your significant other fulfills one of our six basic human needs that I learned from Tony Robbins, that drive every decision we make. There are six human needs that drive every single decision that we make, certainty being one of them. And um, when we hold on to a relationship, even if it's toxic, it's because we are familiar with them. It, it gives us a sense of certainty. We know what to expect. 
we know how they are. We know what they like. We know what they don't like. We, they understand us. They under, we, we know what we can give to them or how we can be with them. And we have some um, play to be able to find some certainty um, in that time. And this is one of the biggest reasons why letting go is hard because we have to let go of a need that we need to have, which is certainty. So realistically, letting go and moving on from a relationship often entails a large amount of uncertainty. When you let go of somebody, if you think about it, letting go of them, you're, you're letting go of the certainty of, of who they are, the familiarity of who they are, and you're letting go into the unknown, which is absolutely freaking scary, right? I mean, who wants to let go of something that we've known for the past six months, one year, two years, three years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? Who wants to let go of that? It's been so certain, so familiar, so me, right? And even if your relationship had reached its conclusion or one or both of you were very unhappy, there was still an amount of certainty there that was comforting. There's an amount of certainty that is comforting. Even if you guys both were like, no, this is not us. It's hard to let go because of this certainty. You know, sometimes we use the paths to justify our current decisions. And that's why we can't figure out how to let go. This often seems very difficult for many because we bring the past into the present and we make current decisions based upon the past. And that's what makes it so hard to let go. Remember when you were rejected by several potential high school, um, potential girlfriends or college friends, you know, those instances when you were rejected could make you hold on to a partner. It's like, well, I don't know if I'll ever be able to find another person like this or whoever could love me the way that they love me. Like they accepted me. I don't know, you know, how hard it was for me to feel accepted in high school, in, in middle school, in college, in, you know, grade school. You know how hard it was for me to feel accepted even by my own family and my own friends and my own, you know, um, in my own home. You know, when we... So then we're, we're fearful to let go because of our past that holds us from a beautiful future. You know, oftentimes you're afraid that you won't find anybody else and that stops you from being able to let go. You know, those memories justify everything for you when you're unable to let go. Those memories become a part of your story and work against you. Ideally, um, letting go is one of the most difficult parts to the relationship when it ends. And that's why I'm here to coach you today and teach you exactly, give you some practical things in which will empower you to be able to begin to move in a direction that you're more joyful about, you know? Um, but like I said earlier, when the first step is you have to be willing to let go. When, when someone comes to me and asks me like, Tyler, how do I let go? I always ask them the question that I ask back is, do we even want to let go? Do you even want to let go of your, your pain that you're currently experiencing? Do you want to be able to experience um, something greater? Do you believe that there is something greater out there after you let go of this heart hurt, hurt of a heart of a feeling of a relationship? Oftentimes people don't see a bright future. And that's what I want to point you towards, you know, is um, really how you can begin to let go of something and or someone. Um, is the first step is your willingness to, to want to let go. You have to be wanting to let go and you have to be moving in direction. Like in order to let go of something, you're giving something up, but then you have to replace it with something better in order to hold hope in your heart. So right now you're in a very difficult um, headspace that's not allowing you to actually believe that there's something or someone better out there for you. And I need you to believe that for a minute with me as, as we talk about this, because there is someone else out there better. And, and, and if there isn't someone else out there better, there is you. There's a better version of yourself that's going to come from this. It's going to spark from this, because in this break breakup, you need to begin to love yourself. Like I, like I said in the original statement, fall in love with taking care of yourself. Fall in love with the path of deep healing. Fall in love with becoming the best version of yourself but with patience, with compassion, respect to your own journey. This is the secret to letting go because you don't need to be folk. Like you're not even ready to let go of someone yet. You're already saying, you're already thinking like, there's not going to be another person out there for me. You're already like, holy crap. We just, we just let someone go. And you're like, you're already thinking about how you won't be able to find someone. You're already thinking about trying to find someone. And you're thinking how you can't find someone like, holy crap, slow the heck down, right? Slow the heck down because realistically, we're on step number one. Trying to find someone is way down the road. Right now, the only person that you need to find is yourself and heal yourself. You know, so 
how you can begin to let go of someone, um, you know, um, another way in which besides being ready to accept the and being willing to let go of someone and then to actually create a beautiful future um, or um, a better future that will alive in your ability to let go is, you know, two things in which you need to do right at the beginning. You need to create a better future than what the past is and you need to be willing to let go. Now, I think another important way is to recognize when it is actually time to let go. Learning when it's time to let go is often the most difficult part of the process, but in many cases, it's necessary to let go in order to unlock the life you deserve. Though each relationship is different in your life, most find it um, super difficult and challenging when they find it time, the time has come to end the relationship. This usually end up, ends up causing more pain than pleasure or when trust has eroded to the point where the romance cannot be rekindled, deciding how to let go becomes easier when you are certain the time has come and that your future happiness depends on a new start. So you need to recognize when it's, when it's time to let go. When you guys are, you know, um, in a position in which happiness is no longer there, love has um, died out and you guys are stabbing each other constantly, verbally, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, you, you say one thing, do another, you do one thing, say another. Um, when you, when you start, you kind of intuitively know that's why it's important for you to spend some time with your heart and, and meditate with your heart. Every morning I put my hand over my heart and I literally tune into my heart and breathe into it and allow myself to connect to my heart so that I have the wisdom and guidance of God in my heart to be able to push me in the proper direction um, in, in, in allowing God to almost take the wheel and allow my heart to guide me rather than my mind to guide me. And ultimately, when it comes to recognizing when it's time, and you know that it's time, but you don't want it to be time, that's the time to let go. When you know it's time, but you don't want it to be time, that is the time to let, let go. I think another way in which you can begin to let go is to identify some of your most limiting beliefs. You know, in order to let go, you've got to understand your limiting beliefs. Do thoughts like I could never be alone or I'll never find someone else who loves me constantly run through your mind. Understand that these are not facts. The, the idea that you will never find another lover is not a fact. They're just limiting, disempowering beliefs. And while beliefs have the power to create your entire reality, you have the power to transform those thoughts. So begin to replace these thoughts. Begin to notice these limiting beliefs. Then begin to replace them with empowering beliefs like, you know what? I am so open to what the universe has in store for me. And I love myself and deserve the best. You may feel silly when you first say this stuff, but when you use these positive um, affirmations as part of your daily routine, you'll begin to see results. So when it comes to letting go, you know, you've got to be willing to let go. You've got to create a better future to let go of the past so that you can walk toward a brighter future. You've got to recognize when it's the right time and when it is the right time, you've got to be willing to accept that it's the right, you know, when it's the time to let go. And then you've got to identify some limiting beliefs. You've got to stop this madness that makes you believe that you're not good enough. You'll never find somebody else. You'll, you'll never fall back in love. Nobody will ever accept you. You've got to recognize these beliefs and then you've got to replace them with empowering beliefs. Like I said, I am open to what the universe has in store for me and I love myself and deserve um, my better self. You know, I think these are some practical and powerful ways in which you can begin to let go in a more empowered way. You know, I think another way is you begin to change your story, your story, what you, the meaning you give things will either empower you or just depress you. Okay. Your story is what you tell yourself to justify your decisions and is based on your limiting beliefs. For example, you tell yourself you can't have a successful relationship because of how you grew up. Your parents argued in front of you all the time and eventually divorced. You can't let go of that belief that all relationships are bound to fail. And this is why you can't maintain a healthy, romantic, and joyful and loving relationship. You use this past experience to justify your current life state, how you're currently living, what you're currently experiencing. But you can change your story. You can change your limiting beliefs so that, you, so that your 
past empowers you instead of holding you back. Your past is not your future unless you live there. Listen, true healing can begin to take place, but only in the present moment. You can't bring your past into the present and expect a different future. And that's why when you hold on to these limiting beliefs of negative self-talk, that it disempower you and you hold this story that, oh, go figure, if I'm with another narcissist or, you know, go figure, I'm divorced, my parents were divorced or like, you know, I'm, I'm having terrible relationships because I n- never had a role model of uh, people in my life to teach me how. If when you start to have these stories and these limiting beliefs, your, your story and your limiting beliefs will create your reality. Now let's switch those to be able to let go in an empowering way. Let's change the limiting beliefs to empowering beliefs and let's change your story from one that is negative to one that is positive. That I am a, uh, you know, a beautiful individual who deserves love to be loved, to give love, to receive love. I am creating a beautiful reality. I'm changing my story, even though my parents personally were divorced at a young age. And this caused me to be in the path that I'm currently in of relationships and love and, um, and, you know, wanting to have what they didn't have. Um, Ideally, I used my parents' divorce and the pain that it was brought into my heart as uh, turned that mess into my message. I personally did. I created the Happy Heart Academy. I became a best-selling author. Um, you know, I'm recording another podcast. This is actually my third different podcast I've created, um, but this is going to be the one that I want to stick to for um, you know to help empower you guys on a weekly basis. Um, so, ideally, I've used my mess and turned it into my message and my pain into my purpose, and that's exactly what you're going to be able to do um, in this time. So, another thing. I want to kind of cover on a practical way in which you can let go of um, besides identifying some limiting beliefs, replacing those limiting beliefs and changing your story is you've got to stop the blame game. Letting go of someone you love doesn't mean you have to negate the truth. You know, don't let it influence your current path. It is human nature to point the finger at someone else or a past incident instead of ourselves. This is why you blame your significant other at the end of the relationship or another person for something terrible that happened to you. Yet even when the facts are terrible or heartbreaking, you cannot let bad experiencing dictate your future. You can't let this heartbreak dictate your future. Instead, use your experiences as a tool to push you to learn and to grow so that you can create healthy relationships with someone else. You know, anytime you begin to blame somebody, for um, your ex, for your heartbreak, you know, or, you know, we would never be here unless you, if you didn't do this, or, you know, the reason why I feel this much pain is because of you. Anytime you give your, you, you blame someone else, you give your power away, you live in the victimhood. And when you're, when you're a victim, you lose your personal power, you lose um, your, yourself, and you lose all control to be able to believe that you can actually progress and move forward in this part hurt time. So you got to stop blaming yourself, blaming other people. You got to blame yourself, I should say. And that's some, that's some hard stuff to take on. I understand. Um, But ultimately when you take full responsibility of your life and the the way that you feel and the thoughts that you think your life will begin to completely change. You know, I have so many other uh, key elements in which you can um, move on and um, heal um, and let, let go. But Just remember that refusing to let go will not bring someone you care about back, okay? Remember that refusing to let go will not bring someone you care about back. Continuing to hold on only hurts your emotional and physical state, keeping you from fully enjoying a happy life. So embrace living in the moment and understand that uncertainty can be beautiful if you look at it from the right perspective. The key to letting go of someone you love is facing what has happened, accepting that you can't change it, and then moving on toward a better future, one that you create. And once you're able to move on and appreciate the growth that came from that relationship, better opportunities, better relationships, better people will present themselves. You will have successfully learned how to let go of someone you can, that you once loved and begin writing a new story. Today, I hope you understand that there are practical ways in which you can let go of someone. There are practical ways in which you can take time to heal yourself. And some of the ways, once again, that I think um, are the best ways to let go is first, you've got to recognize and you've got to accept that it's time to let go, all right? And then 
You have to know what you're letting go of and why you're letting go of it. And then you create this beautiful picture toward something that you're moving toward. It's going to be hard to move on if you don't know what you're moving toward. Remember to always identify your limiting beliefs. These limiting beliefs often hold you back. They hold you back from being able to experience happiness and understanding that these limiting beliefs are not facts. They're just limiting beliefs and, and they disempower you from creating a better, happier future and self. So replace them with empowering beliefs. Change your story is going to be a powerful one for you if you're currently, um, if, you're, if your story from the past is currently dictating your present or your future. You've got to understand that you have full control over your story and you can rewrite it at any time. This is one of the greatest things that I did for myself was I started to picture what I wanted my life to look like after my heartbreak. This heartbreak defined me, defined me for a while. It's like, I'm heartbroken. I'm depressed. I'm, you know, in these battling thoughts of suicide, but you know what? I begin to change my story and I'm like, you know what? This is not what I stand for. This is not how I want to feel. This is not what, what I want other people to experience. So what do I want my life to look like now? How do I want to feel now? And I begin to change that. And it just made me feel so much better. And you've got to stop the blame game. Like the moment that you blame someone else for the thoughts, feelings, emotions, and certain times that you're currently in is the moment that you lose all power and control of overcoming that. So letting go is something that does take time. But like I said before, the key to letting go of someone you love is facing, facing what has happened. You've got to face that. What has happened? then you have to accept that you can't change it because refusing to let go will not bring someone you cared about back. And then you've got to move on toward a more beautiful and bright future. <laughs>